Hey folks, uh, today I bring you another uh, super fun carving. I'm still jazzed about this. I just finished it. And uh, it's really a neat take on the simple Santa and uh, more complicated elf guy, right? Very similar shape outline. And it's this guy. Isn't it cool? He's kind of a sleepy old chap. I simplified some parts of him a little because uh, for a lot of folks, the eyes are difficult to do for the first time. And so uh, while this is no spring chicken, that's not a saying. Well, this is not super easy. It's definitely attainable. And I love the profile, love the character in this guy. And uh, yeah, a little under an hour to get him done. So hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it before I drop it again. <laughs> And per usual, if you want to check out more of what I do in terms of uh, realistic face carving, and you want to support these free videos I post to YouTube, uh, check out the online school. It features realistic projects uh, in wood and just a lot of other stuff. Everything from beginners to intermediate to advanced. And there's my ad. So check that out in the link below. But I almost forgot to say what the school is for. It's faces. It's, it's about making realistic faces. And that's carving of my wife that I'm working on. Anyway. Uh, yeah, back to it. Uh, today I'm starting with a two by two piece of basswood that I halved on the bandsaw. Uh, you can build a nice little rig for that. Uh, but, uh, this is a really nice little form factor for carving. It gives you a couple of blanks and, uh, it's fairly easy to get a two by two. And so other tools include a knife. This is an inch and a half healthy knife. And yes, I'm totally aware that these are hard to come by, but also I uh, wanted to let you know you, you don't need to have this tool. Uh, this is not even um, the best knife out there as far as what uh, what I prefer. It's just something that uh, it's nice for whittling because it's nice and wide. It's got a uh, half inch wide blade, like I said, inch and a half tall. And uh, it's got a couple little nicks in it, but it should be all right for this lesson. The way I keep it sharp, I have a strop nearby at all times, which is, uh, which is just a little piece of wood with leather on it. This is a fancy version that... Uh, prototype that someone made for me. And uh, Zamp, rub the honing compound on that. And uh, that's how I keep them nice and sharp. And I like to do this uh, even in, in the middle of a project if my tool starts to uh, show up uh, little white lines or whatever. Um, sometimes that'll be an issue. So anyway, just I like to uh, run this drop a few times. I also have a power strop. Uh, this is a really fast version of the hand strop. And uh, it's made by Ken Onion, uh, well, Worksharp, and it's a Ken Onion version. And this thing is nice because it spins quickly. You can set the speed like so, and uh, just kind of run it across. You get both sides of the blade. And really, that does a lot of work in very little time. It's actually a link in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. It's an affiliate link, so I do get uh, small... Uh, kickback from that helps me to make these videos so if you're trying to get one use that link uh, otherwise uh, I've got a pencil and of course just a little ruler nearby uh, so to start this one I want to come down about an inch and a half from the top so I'm just gonna go like so use my thumb all right and the first thing I want to do is just make a stop cut right at that inch and a half mark and coming in pretty decent depth there All right now from this uh, little line here this inch and a half line I'm gonna come down about a full inch and uh, that's gonna give me the bottom of my nose Right, this is going to be kind of a v-shape really what we're doing here if you've seen my santa video is uh doing a very similar form factor to that so this is going to be uh an upward angle here instead of just going straight across kicking the sides up like so okay All right, so I'm going to uh, come just about uh, a quarter of an inch from the top of the 
this line here, this inch and a half line, which looks like it needs to come up a little bit higher. There we go. All right. So yeah, just about a quarter of an inch down from there, I'm gonna carve a line in. And I'm gonna extend this line over actually too, before I get too far here. And it's gonna have a little bit of a uh, you know length to it, so coming across about uh, maybe a full inch or so. This top line here. Okay, so like I said, about a quarter of an inch down from the top of that line. In fact, scratch that. Let's go a little bit lower. Let's do uh, let's see about a half an inch. Let's go about a half an inch down. He's gonna have a little more forehead on him. All right. And I'll just come in the side here. And just like that, we've got a little profile. Isn't that nice? You can almost see the character in him already. All right. I'm just bringing that down. And I'm just bringing that about, uh, well, I'll say quarter of an inch down here. It's kind of three planes I'm making. One, two, three. All right. Just taking a little bit more out of the top here. Just tapering this angle back. Like so. All right. All right, so something I neglected to do, to do that uh, is nice to do, you'll see Doug doing this, you'll see a lot of carvers doing this to start a project. Take the sharp corners off, right? Because no one wants to uh, have to deal with that. Kind of make it more comfortable on the old hands. face here and take the corners off all right that's a lot nicer to hold <laughs> could have started with that but that's okay we're good we're just moving right along here all right so I'm going to uh, just widen this top cut this uh, this is that cut that we made right at the beginning that uh, inch and a half cut from the top here all right, so uh, now I'm going to start to think a little bit about the overall shape of this guy. And again, kind of want to throw back to the uh, Santa Claus. I want him to have a uh, really simple head design. I want his kind of hair to curl over. He's going to be a wood spirit. So instead of having his, uh, you know, his hat with the ball down here, I'm just going to have his hair curl down like so. All right. So I'm going to kind of take the corners off of here, here, just start to round the shape. So, just taking that corner off, all right, and a uh, nice little element of design, got a positive angle here, we're going to want to create a negative angle here, so I'm actually going to come in and take a little bit out from here, and that's going to give it some flow. So we got that positive and that negative angle. And again, we're just trying to make that hair nice and flowy. All right, I'm gonna take some of the top of this off as well. Just get rid of the saw marks. We don't want any saw marks on there. Paper this back as well. You just have to love that sound and that feeling. I've had a lot of folks uh, reach out to me recently and ask me about uh, a good knife to start with because uh, 
most of y'all have trouble with getting good quality tools and keeping them sharp, and I understand that problem. It's uh, actually still a problem for me after all these years to uh, get the gumption to take all my tools off the rack and sharpen them up again, so I understand. But a really decent maker of uh, knives is really readily available. Uh, you can get them at uh, most online wood carving stores, and I'm pretty sure you can get them on Amazon. They make a nice little knife set. It's a flex cut. So it's one option, not, not an affiliate, <laughs> but, uh, a good company nonetheless. All right. So I'm going to come in about a half an inch from the outside here and pair this down right around the side of the face here. Okay. Just want to start to get closer to the final width. Unlike Santa, he's not going to have this, uh, hat, this wide brim hat. And so we can just come right to the side of his face. Maybe he has a little hair. So we're just taking about a half inch of material off both sides. All right. Okay. Alrighty. I'll take a little bit away from the beard as well. And now since the hair is going to kind of come over this way, like so, I'm going to have the beard go this way. And so what that means is, um, I'm going to do that positive negative thing again. But this time, instead of the negative shaping on this side, I'm going to put it on the opposite side. Right? So the negative shape is going to be here. It doesn't have to be too extreme. Just take a little bit out of the outline. And uh, then we'll move the hair over here. Right? Take this corner off. I'm moving really fast here, and uh, if you're just starting out for the first time, this is your first project, feel free to stop and restart the video as often as you need to, because this is definitely uh, me moving quickly, right? And this is uh, years of experience behind the knife. I've been carving wood as a uh, full-time deal, and teaching and all that for, uh, well, teaching almost uh, 12 years, right about 12, and uh, carving for uh, about 16 so don't rush yourself don't be hard on yourself if you're taking your you know taking your time on it so anyway that being said just trying to remove the saw marks here at the hair really just all around the piece so at this point you know you can start to think about getting rid of the saw marks and taking off sharp edges right cutting corners <laughs> talked about that for. It's a good thing to cut corners in wood carving, right? Okay, just taking these hard edges off, getting the corners cut down. Not going to be a lot of hard edges on this piece. All right, looking good. I'm going to take a little bit more out of the uh, beard area. Again, just getting rid of those saw marks. Notice a little safety tip that my uh, blade is always kind of uh, stopped by my thumb. By one thumb or another, I have something there so that if my knife keeps going, it's not just going to go right into my hand. I personally recommend you wear a glove. The reason I'm not wearing a glove, because I'm a silly boy. I definitely should be. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. So if you have years and years of experience with knives, you know, you might not use a glove, but uh, even then, I recommend it. I think you should. All right, so uh, that's that. Now I want to talk a little bit about uh, just the uh, mustache. So I'm going to come down, oh, probably about a quarter of an inch from the nose here. And make a little V, just like so. Like that. I'm going to cut that line in, like so. And I'm just take a little meat away from underneath, as Doug would say. A little meat, right? And uh, take that uh, mustache down, like so. And 
you got to be patient with yourself on these. You know, they don't just uh, they don't just come together on their own, and it takes a little bit of thought. Take your time. All right, so I've got the mustache line cut in. And, you know, you could make this V a little bit narrower if you want, like come down like so instead of be so wide. I just chose mine to be that way. So, all right, I'm going to come up just above that line, about a half an inch or so. Make another little line here. This is the top of the mustache. You could have drawn it in before you carved it. Anyway, see that? Right at the sides of the nose. And it's at this point, leaving about a half inch space between the two edges of the nose, I'm just gonna make a straight incision like so. Then come in, cut that out. And we've got ourselves a nose. Same thing over here, straight in with the knife, about a half inch from this last cut. And then down it, right perpendicular to that first cut. That comes out, and look at that. That gives us our nose, how fun. All right, I don't want our nose to be too pointy, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this tip off, like so. And uh, let's do the beard here. There's just gonna be a little bit of a line that comes to uh, meet the uh, initial line that we made right above the mustache, right? So this is the edge of the mustache here, and the edge of the beard just gonna V down from the top of the hair, like that. Right? Pretty straightforward. And you can just eyeball, make sure the left side is the same as the right side. You just go in with the knife like so. Take a little bit out. Take a little bit out. Same with here. Straight in. Take a little bit out. A little bit at a time. Take your time here. You cut yourself when you have dull tools and then when you're in a rush. So. If there's anyone breathing down your neck while you're making a carving, trying to rush you, tell them to stop. <laughs> it's not worth it. So now I'm just narrowing up the side of the forehead. Just like so. Just coming straight in. And there's a, probably about an inch of uh, material from one side of the forehead to the other. I'm guessing. And just coming in. And I'm just meeting that angle of the beard, right? So we came here. And then we'll come up here as well. And that's our stop cut. And we come back in here, like so. Like so. Same here. Boom. Boom. Let's see if that chip comes out. And don't be afraid to turn the carving upside down and give you a better vantage point. There we go. See that? Very good. Now, the problem that we could have here is if we left this line up top here straight across it's uh looking more like a hat <laughs> than, a, than hair so how do you fix that well i'm gonna come up with a little v here and a little v here make that v a little wider make this v a little wide okay so scribbly lines but hopefully you get the point come up with the blade following those squiggly lines I made and just taking little bits at a time and uh, follow this other side of the V okay taking that chunk out all right and look at that starts one side of our hairline right because uh, he's got that relief there you can make this V a little bit uh, smaller on one side than the other because no one's hairline is exactly perfect across. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say no one's. I don't know your hairline. You could have one. Comment below if you have a perfect hairline across. <laughs> All right. Just coming across there. Beautiful. Look at that. He's already developing a little character. <laughs> All right, so another thing you can do is uh, create the flow of the hair. I'm just gonna take a little bit of material just out of here, right? A lot like we did when we did our Santa and that hat folded over, 
Well, we want the hair to fold over. So I'm just going to create a deep groove in here, a separation between the fold of the hair that comes around like so. Right? Notice again, my thumbs are blocking the knife, so that's protecting me. Try to have some built-in protection, some measure of safety there. All right. Happy with that. And I'll just take the hard edges off, right? Cut the cutting corners, if you will. All right, looking good. Take the corners off his beard as well. And I'm just gonna take the hair. I want the hair to come over the beard. So I'm gonna continue this line that we started up here on down. Like so. So he's got that wild man hair, right? That wood spirit hair. Okay. And I'm just going to take some of the remaining blockiness, hard edges, bulk off of this top here. I don't want it to be, look like he's got his hair all gelled, you know, like a pompadour. I want his hair to be kind of greasy and, you know, he's been in the woods for who knows how long, right? His whole life, I guess, he's a wood spirit. So I want him to uh, have a little bit more of a matted hair, not so perfect. And you might even take a little groove out of the edge of your head just to break up those hairs, make them almost clumped a little bit more, right? Because he's not gonna have perfectly combed hair. I'm gonna do this down to the beard as well, create a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of texture, a little bit of grooves. Okay, just little bites, because uh, sometimes the end grain doesn't want to listen to you very well. Alrighty. Little cuts. Okay, same down here. Talked about that. Yeah, we'll just put one here. Try not to make these cuts too uniform, because if these uh, cuts are too perfectly straight across, it'll start to look more like a saw blade than a nice natural hairline. All right, we just don't want to make too many patterns is all. And don't get carried away adding uh, too many of these grooves. Just need a couple here and there, maybe three. I'm taking these saw marks out now. these bandsaw blade marks on the wood and just taking the corners and cutting them down like so just like yet <laughs> feels only natural to imitate Bob Ross when you're doing something like this right and just take a little chunk from under the nose just so that nose stands away from the mustache a little more. Like so, boom. And again, just getting rid of some of those saw marks. See all that chatter from the blade? You don't want that. You can take that mustache line as well and uh, curve it, right? Because there aren't a lot of straight lines in nature. And I've not seen a lot of guys with beards that have real straight lines there either. I mean, I guess if they went to the barber and got uh Do they make gel for mustaches and beards? I don't know. I guess wax. They make wax. Anyway, point is, don't want it to be too straight, right? None of these lines should be too perfectly straight at the end of the day. But, uh, you know, it's also just a... Uh, Fun little character, it doesn't have to be perfectly true to reality either, right? Just cleaning it up a little bit. Taking the saw blade marks out. And create a little separation between the left and right bar. A little stop cut or a leaf cut like so. And see how that makes the left and right side of the mustache come out? Alright. 
And again, just uh, slowly working, at getting these chatter marks out of here. And making some little scallop cuts. You know what a scallop cut is? It's where you take the knife and you, you curve in. And a lot of times you have to go on the other side of that scallop to finish the cut because the wood grain doesn't let you. Sometimes, if you're lucky, it'll let you scoop out a bit. Right? And I like to do that towards the end of the beard just to make the beard kind of flip forward a little. See that? It's kind of cool, right? And it'll just take a little scallop out of the uh, negative side. Remember we talked about the positive, this curve here, and the negative, this little indent here. I'm just going to take a little bit more of a scoop out of that. Why, you ask? Because it's my world. <laughs> right? It's like Bob Ross used to say. You get to create your own little world here and make your own decisions. And I want mine to be a little bit thinner on this side, so that's all. All right. Cool, looking good. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit away from this, uh, this V. Remember where the beard and the mustache meet? Just kind of taking a little chunk out of there, like so. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Get rid of the chatter marks on, their, on his cheek. You can see they're still left behind. And on his nose. Okay. Like that. Okay, getting close. This is just meant to be kind of a simple project. It might be quick for you. It might not be your first few times around, but you know it shouldn't take you uh, too many weeks, right? It should be uh, just a matter of a few hours. You know, again, for me, I've been doing this for a long time, so of course it's going to take me a little less time than uh, probably the average person definitely the average beginner right so again don't be uh too hard on yourself here going around with the knife just kind of making that turn that turn that hair kind of falls down right it's long and it flows down so i'm just getting that knife in there and just doing a little turn like so around the world okay and some of the lines from the uh, groupings of the hair coming down, like so. Just making little cuts at a time, like that. See that curve that I made? All right. And we'll just continue with a few of those little grooves, like so. I like to put a little separation there at the uh, corners of the hairline here and here, like that. See that? Kind of divides up this big mass and makes it look a little bit lighter. And we're just making making a wild man. This guy's uh this guy's seen some world. Seen some <laughs> seen some world. He's seen some life is what I mean. He uh he's definitely gonna be a little ragged. Getting rid of that saw chatter. And if you leave that behind, if you go to put oil on this or any finish, it's it's gonna mess it up. It's gonna look dark. It's gonna look like you got smacked in the face, right? It's gonna look all bruised. Okay, making a little deeper cut under the mustache, like so. A little triangle cut, really, in, like so, in here. And then we're leaving that cut out, just like that. Okay, very good. Now uh, I'm gonna pause to just uh, polish up my blade for a moment. You can see the reflectivity 
of the tip is to just be polished. So I'm going to grab my uh, work sharp and just uh, clean this bad boy up. any yeah that uh, reflection is mostly gone so that's a good sign yeah, that's better I'm taking the rest of that chatter out I'm not saying cheddar for those of you who are wondering it's cheddar and I was about to spell it for you but I don't know <laughs> I don't want to mess it up all right, taking a little scoop, a little scooping cut. Again, if you don't uh, have uh, any skills in scooping, find yourself a little scrap piece of wood and just practice on the corner, just the scooping motion, right? That little scout motion. You can't always do this in every side of the wood, right? Not every corner will allow you to do that. Right? This one's giving me a little bit harder of a time. But just practice on a little scrap. Practice that scowl cut. So, a little tiny scallop, right? A little tiny curve right in between the uh, this cheek and the nose, right? All right, same here. And a little scallop cut, right? And you know, this is not an easy cut to get down, so uh, do get yourself a scrap piece of wood and practice that. Okay. Take my word for it, it's harder than it looks. You're gonna get all kinds of chatter. You know, these little lines, that's that's what I'm calling chatter. You can get chatter from a saw blade, you can get chatter from a knife. It's just a bunch of unwanted little lines. So I'm just opening up the, uh, call it opening up, and I'm just taking the, the corners off of the brow, right? So I'm just uh, coming along here, taking those hard edges down. Like so I'm just cleaning up any messes that I made, any little loose hairs. Like so. I'm seeing all kinds of loose hairs in here. And we can clean it up later. We don't have to worry about that today. Right? Okay. I'm just gonna take away the little breakage I had. And I'm just kind of going over the whole thing and just assessing it, seeing what it needs, seeing where the chatter is left behind. I don't want the chatter there, right? You can even take that scoop cut and come across the beard like so. Like that nice little... See how that kind of flips the beard up a little bit like so? Comes toward you. That's a really neat effect. That's why it's definitely a good idea to get that scrap out and practice that scoop cut. You can practice it on this too, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that. Okay. And, uh, practice that scoop cut on here, bottom, like so. How about that? I'm going to put another uh, little stop cut in here. Just break up the masses a little bit. Looks a little bulky down below, so just a V cut. Kind of break that up, right? That edge, so it's not so perfect, right? This guy's not combing his hair. That's my point here, all right? He's probably hurting for a bath, honestly. He doesn't even know what a bath is. See, I had a straight line back here. I'm trying to get rid of that. I don't want that straight line. All right? We don't want. Uh, we don't want to make Bedbeard the pirate here, right? I'm just taking a little curve. This is a little bit of an advanced technique, right? So uh, now we're getting into advanced territory, so you beginners ignore this, but uh, you can really make a piece by uh, doing these curves, S's. S's in the hair if you can. I mean, it's hard when you're starting out. It's another good thing to practice on a piece of scrap wood, or just practice it on your carving, and if it doesn't work out, you know, you tried, you learned, right? But uh, 
yeah, S's are very important in hair. You know, just a soft S like that. See how that comes around? And I'll just follow that S down here as well. And that's going to give that mustache. Look at that flow. That gives that. Isn't that nice? It gives that mustache that awesome flow. Okay. All right. Coming around here as well. A little scallop. A little scallop, scallop. A little scallop, scallop here. A little scallop, scallop there. See, when you see that, you pulled across that and it started to break, right? Well, what do you do? I like to go the other way. Turn the piece of wood around, go the opposite direction. Sometimes the wood tells you who's the boss, right? <laughs> Unlike the Bob Ross paintings, right? It, uh, sometimes you're just living in the woods world, right? Just trying to avoid making that too flat. So I just round that out, okay? Break up that edge. Look at that. Look at that. He's starting to get some cool character to him. Let's play with his eyes now a little. This is a real challenge uh, for beginners, right? But uh, if you want to learn a really basic, super simple eye, um, you're going to want to check out a Gene Messer. You're going to want to check out a Doug Linker. They've got a really super simple eye. This might be an eye that you're uh, kind of aspiring to in the future if you're trying to go more realism. Um, but we're going to keep it closed just to make it nice and simple, right? So that crease that we have right here, I'm going to go in on that crease, just like so, right? See that? Going straight in and across and down. Right? So that angle is down. And the same thing here, a little crease. Try to keep it, you know, even with the other side. And if it helps, just get your pencil out and draw it on one side. Draw it on the other. That way, if it doesn't look uh, even, you can just erase it and try again. Once you knife it in, it's kind of permanent. So that being said, Come straight in along that knife line, like so, right? And uh, again, he's going to be sleeping. So now I'm going to, it's kind of a tricky cut, I'm going to be coming in this inside corner, just a little bit of material. See what's happening there? Remember we did our scoop cuts earlier? Well, this is a tiny little scoop cut, just like so, right? You're probably saying, get back to the carving, we don't need this. But uh, maybe somebody does, so just be patient for them. Right? It's a little scoop cut like that. A little scoop cut, just like so. So practice that. A right, little tiny scoop cut. That's what we're doing in this inside corner. Oh, man overboard. Sorry, my friend. Didn't mean to drop you. All right, same thing over here. So we made that stop cut. And we're coming in. And we're turning that blade. Notice the handle hasn't coming through. Not an easy thing. So... Don't be hard on yourself, but uh, but it's not too bad either once you get the hang of it and once you figure out where to place it. So I'm just coming on the inside. Notice I'm leaving room for that bridge. Okay, same thing here. All right, just like so. How about that? All right, and uh, I'm gonna come underneath this line and I'm gonna put a second line. Right? And it's going to be kind of a V of sorts, right? So we've got this line up here, and we've got a really narrow V. We're going to come straight in here, right? Like so. See that? See what I'm doing there? How about that? Same thing here. Look at that. See that? A little counterintuitive. But just putting a little V, a real thin V in there, right? How about that? Okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, grab my pencil, show you, so you're not confused as to where it is. Not that you would be anyway. So a line right in there, okay? And a line right in there. And we're going to go in with a knife and cut a little V out. See that? Okay. Yep. Same thing here. Boom. Coming straight in there. And then an angle will cut out. Just like it. Right? Just like that. I'm accidentally doing Bob Ross again. Oops. You see what I'm doing there? 
See how we just got that little mound now? And we're going to start to round this little mound that we created. I'm just going to round it. So I'm going to take the hard corners off it. All right? Just like so. Get a little closer so you can see what I mean here. Okay. So we're going to leave his eyes closed. Closed. And just cleaning up up to that line. And I want to take a little bit more out of the inside of that triangle that we carved earlier, make it nice and deep in there. Because that's going to give him that kind of deep set look. And, you know, he's been out there for a while, this guy. So he's going to have lots of character. Like that. All right. And how about that? Can narrow his nose up a little tiny bit now. And I'm just coming in with a knife and that scoop cut. Like so, see that? I'm still scooping on that inside corner, and I'm stopping at the brow ridge. And then I can come up and clean that up, right? Like so. Come up and clean that up, right? Going back to that uh, top part of the V here and angling into the bridge. Okay. Look at that. And just like that, we've got a little eye mound. Right. And you can take the bottom of that V and you can carry it down even if you want to make them real old. Call this uh, kind of a gaunt look. You know, you don't want to make this V cut too deep, otherwise he starts to get uh, what we call cacactic, which is where he's so gaunt, he's so thin, he's emaciated, he's a... Uh, He's sickly, right? He's too thin. We don't want to make him too thin, right? We want him to look healthy, but I mean, he's been out there in the woods for a long time, so he's not, uh, he's just eating acorns and whatever wood spirits eat, right? But you can see now that V comes down like so. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to take a little chunk out of the side of his face, like so. Boom. The side of his brow ridge, I should say, right? Like so. A little bit more out of his brow ridge. Like that, like so, like sat. I almost said. Okay, a little bit more. And what that's gonna do is, uh, the more you take out of the corners of the brow here and here, it's gonna make this look a little bit rounder. His his eyeball. <clears throat> All right, just a couple of finishing touches. I'm gonna narrow the forehead a little more. See how I just came along the side of the forehead? Scooped out a bit there. I'm gonna come on this side. Just take about a quarter of an inch or so, maybe even less, more like an eighth of an inch. And uh, clean that chip out, that hairline. I mean, you could just really go ham with this guy. I mean, you could you could detail his hair. You could come in and really just make him fantastic if you want to. But uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on uh, creating this hair, right? Uh, but there's just so much that you can do with uh, with a knife and uh, with given a little more time, of course. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope it was informative for you. Uh, and uh, if you're new to this whole carving thing, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. And uh, again, this guy's kind of got closed eyes, so we don't really have to detail his eyes. What we can do, though, if we want to really show people that his eyes are closed, is we can actually come underneath, right, his uh, his eye, this, what we're calling this little area here is his eye mound, right? So we can come underneath that and really carve it deep in. Right, like so. I'm just following that line and tracing it out. Again, see how my thumb is protecting? It's an extra kind of guide for me. Coming underneath, like so, okay? Then I come underneath that line. Same thing we've been doing. Once you establish that line, you come underneath it to uh, relieve a little material, like so. And now you can see his eyelid kind of stand away from his cheek. And that's what's going to show people when they see this. Ah, oh, this guy's sleeping. All right. And uh, that is just kind of a fun effect, I've got to say. And that's a sweet little carving, you know, for, uh, for a basic little 
piece. I mean, that's something to be proud of, right? You can you can make something like that and give it to somebody, and they'd be really happy with it. Then we could do one last uh, little thing here with the nose, uh, the nostrils. Right? We can uh, detail those suckers with uh, a little bit of uh, a curve from the side, right? We kind of want to get that nose to come out a little bit more. Now, yeah, of course, this is definitely not for the faint of art, but we could take our knife and uh, follow that line that we just made. See, the hand motion is knife, thumb as, as pressure and guide. And then my, my hand that's holding the knife is turning it like so. All right, so I'm coming in. I'm just taking a little chunk out of there. And see how that gives us our nostril flare? You can come in and round that out if you want to later, but but that's how you get your nostril flare. You can even come in underneath and uh, and really just define the opening of the nostril a little bit more. You don't want to take a lot out because that uh, bushy mustache is covering a lot of it. But I'll show you again what that looks like. Thumb, get that thumb right in there, and just gently rock that knife. See, I'm turning that knife follow that line like so all right i'll come back in and just clean out a little sliver look at that look at that okay all right guys again thanks for watching uh, check out the other projects if you haven't already and uh i have uh, an online carving school that uh We'll talk about it in a little bit more detail, but uh, really it's just a place if you're looking to grow your skills and carving faces. I talk about all this stuff, but uh, I really break it down and there's tons of uh, projects on uh, kind of learning realism in faces and how to, basically how I know where to take all this wood off. If you're kind of wondering how I figured out where this stuff, you know, goes and how it goes, check out the school. It's definitely a great resource, but I'm going to keep uh, carving on this guy. And uh, I'm not going to keep you for too much longer because it's up to you how far you want to take it. But uh, carve a few more grooves and then we'll call this, uh, call this a finished carving. Right? So we're just going to take some grooves in here and the beard. Again, just kind of breaking up that mustache, breaking up that beard, making it look a little bit more flowy. A little bit less uh, beautiful, right? We don't want it to be too beautiful. Otherwise, man, people are going to look at him and say, who prettied this guy up? You know, whose wife took care of this guy, you know, brought him in from the forest and just gave him a bowl of Campbell's soup and, you know, told him he was pretty and combed his hair, gave him a bath. You know what I mean? You don't want that. You want a mountain guy. You know, you want a, you want a woodsman. You want a guy with an axe. <laughs> Well, I guess a tree spirit, he probably doesn't have any arms, does he? Boy, I shouldn't open my mouth. I don't know what I'm talking about. I have no idea. Okay, just coming in. Creating these grooves, creating that movement, that hair. All right, like so. And, you know, these, these little steps, you know, it's... Uh, I say I'm not going to bore you with it, but yeah, this is important too. His hair is, you know, wasn't there a song? Perfect hair is all you really need. Well, you're not going to have perfect hair, but uh, these grooves, again, lots of curves in my grooves, right? I'm not just going straight in. A problem that you see when people carve hair is they just make the hair stick straight. And, well, even straight hair isn't actually stick straight if you look at it up close it's got movement to it there's tufts there's there's grain there's groupings there's subgroupings right there's all this stuff going on even in straight hair so we're not going to create straight lines we're going to avoid that right you promise you promise you're never going to do that again no more straight straight lines lined up one after another there's a few straight lines in straight hair don't get me wrong but uh not a lot so if you're doing all these little straight up and down lines you're probably doing something wrong right that's all i'm saying at least that's my take you know i shouldn't boss you around so much though i feel kind of bad now sorry about that 
Okay. Again, it's been a lot of fun, guys. I, uh, I do appreciate you watching this. And uh, check out the school if you're interested. I have a lot more projects. Or I take this project and I take it to the take it to the 10th degree, you know, I really, really, uh, show you how to make this realistic. Anyway, I enjoyed making this and I'm going to keep making these videos. And, uh, of course the school supports that. And so you supporting me through the school helps me to make these videos. And, uh, thanks a lot guys. Thanks a lot for, uh, tuning in today. I hope that this was uh, informative again. I've said it before, uh, have fun with this, you know, and, uh, be nice to yourself. That's the hardest part when you're doing these carvings is to just be nice to yourself and not say, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Right? Don't say that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be like me. Just enjoy it. Okay, so I'm going to keep playing around with his hair. I'm going to bid you adieu because, uh, I mean, how much time can you spend watching somebody carve hair? All right, guys. Thanks. See you in the next one. I'm too busy carving to shut the camera off. So you're just going to have to watch me for another minute. It's like a bonus scene. You didn't even want. shut it off now. Well, I know I said I'd be gone, but I wanted to give you a quick little uh, update as to uh, what I've been doing to his face. Uh, not his face, his, uh, well, a little bit of his face. I just clean the inside corners out here and here. I just deepen the uh, groove here along the uh, nose that makes the uh, nostril flare. And then I really came in and made uh, some, some smoothness in the beard and continued my cuts and really just broke up these sections a little bit more. So it's more than, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So five little deep cuts down below, not a ton again, and then just one, two, um, and then uh, really just two kind of big ones up top to break up these sections as well. Could have done more up there, but uh, I'm going to call this pretty much done as far as the carving part goes. Right? And so we're just going to do a light wash of paint on this guy, uh, just on his hair to brighten it up, to kind of give it some contrast to his face. But first, of course, per usual, we're going to uh, seal the piece. You could use uh, a lot of different things to seal the pores of the wood, but it is important that you seal before you paint because if you don't, the colors will reach past your boundaries and uh, the grain will just kind of mess up your, your clean lines. So I'm using a water-based polyacrylic. This is a clear mat. I don't like any shine at all. And so uh, it's best to do this sort of thing in an environment that's either uh, dedicated for painting. You know, we got some good ventilation. I'm gonna start my fan up as soon as I'm done spraying this, but uh, I recommend you do it outside if you can, obviously. Don't drop them now. All right, just give them a little spray down, seal them up, and you don't want to go too much, uh, too much uh, spraying here because they'll start to uh, pool up. And so it's even good to have a little towel nearby to kind of blot off any excess, just so it doesn't pool. But the first pass, most of the time, the excess will absorb in the wood. We're gonna let this dry for uh, probably about a half hour or so, and then we'll come back and uh, do a light uh, paint on them. It's uh, nice and dry now. And I'm just gonna take a, a little bit of white paint. I'm just using a titanium paint with a little bit of thinner. And uh, it's an oil-based paint, but you could definitely get away with a uh, water-based. 
And I'm just actually taking a plastic cup here, nothing fancy, and uh, added a little thinner to that, and I'm just mixing it up like so. I want a kind of uh, middle consistency, so thin, but uh, not, not completely pigmentless, right? So I'm going to uh, kind of mix a little bit of a thicker paint on one side and then a thinner paint on the other. Don't want to add uh, so much thinner that you don't have options. And I'm going to start with a really th kind of thin wash down from below, and then we'll work up to that thicker stuff up top. Okay, just going to create these thin washes. Like so. When you first start applying this, you might think, uh, well, that's not enough paint. But try to resist, at least uh, if you ask me, I think it looks better when it's just a thin wash. I don't want it to look like it was uh, you know, just like painted. And really what happens is if it looks too kind of opaque or too uh, not just too solid, it, it looks like you just bought it at a store, right? You want people to see that you carved this by hand and that there's uh, a lot of love and care that went into each cut and part of that is seeing the grain so I don't want to hide that grain that's why I'm just doing thin light washes on the hair and if you wanted to give his hair some gray tone to it or uh, even play with his hair you could make it green you could do what you want it's again it's your world so in my case I'm just gonna kinda keep it natural and uh, I might take my extra scrap towel and just brush off a little bit of the paint on the high surfaces and that gives it almost uh, an old look. Okay, I don't want the uh, paint to get on his forehead so I'll wipe that off if it is. And I'm just going to take and, yeah, and you can even take a little thinner on your uh, towel as well just to wipe off the excess see how that kind of gives it a nice subtle look almost like a stain okay that's what we're going for here and the same thing on the beard just a light tone of white I'm really not much for painting carvings if I'm being totally honest and so if I do I want it to be so minimal that uh, it almost looks natural and that's really one of the things I love about oil paints is uh you could use an acrylic with water, but personally, I think the oils have a more uh, more natural look when you dilute them. They, they definitely take the dilution better. All right, so just coming through with that white. Somebody messaged me and said, uh, can't wait to get my... Uh, my order in the mail, I, I picked up a, a pair of Crocs and a knife. <laughs> thought that was awesome, but uh, he doesn't need to have the Crocs, does he? But it helps, but it helps. So I'm just, uh, a lot of times I'll think of it almost like a house painter. I'll cut in, you know, I'll really be careful about cutting in, and then I'll just get kind of the big, big, big areas next. Well, I guess I don't really know if that's how house painters do it. Do they block in first? Anyway, you can answer if you're a house painter. Please comment below. I'm very curious now. And be aware that there's going to be some dripping and uh yeah just kind of you're gonna get a little messy that's just kind of the way it is you're just getting a little messy that's the point of this whole thing right getting your hands dirty getting your mind engaged active and putting your hands to work and look how subtle that is i mean to me that is ideal right i don't want to add a ton of pigmentation and make him look like he's 
just some painted guy, you know, some some character that you bought at Walmart. I want him to look natural and uh, and cool. So I'm going to take that paper towel once again and just take the highlight and just, you know, take the, the, the high parts off. I mean, just rub that paint off the high points. I like the look that that gives. You don't have to do this stage. And uh, we didn't do much for our eyebrows, right? We kept it super straightforward and simple. So if you want to paint them on, you can get away with it. I'll let you, I'll let it slide. So I'll just take a little bit of that white and just uh, paint a, just a little bit of an eyebrow situation for him. We'll let that slide, right? So what if they're drawn on? That's not a big deal. Just a tiny bit, okay? And uh, like I mentioned, if you want another optional thing, you can take that more concentrated paint that you mixed up on the other side of the cup or maybe in a separate cup. You can take that, just a little less diluted, a little more pigment in there, and you can take and make some little highlight points. So just take a little bit of that paint wherever you see fit and just make a little highlight, okay, here and there. And that to me, that's kind of a nice thing. It adds a little depth, right? So I just might come in and do that. And yeah, it looks a little bit crazy now. It looks a little stark, but we can come in with a towel and blot off the uh, excess and it'll just give it a little bit of depth. So you can do this a number of ways. I mean, you can you can fill in the cracks, you can get the high points. I mean, just try and create a little contrast, right, to the to the tones that we've got here. So we've got the natural wood tone coming through, we've got the white wash, and then we've got a little bit more of that pure white coming through as well. To me, that just really makes it look like it's uh, got depth to it. Okay, I'm gonna take my towel. Once again, uh, just blot gently. I don't want these lines to be too harsh or uh, too hard. I want that white just to be subtle highlights, not any like sharp lines or anything. And uh, with oil paint, it does take a little while to dry. This is the biggest downside. So if you're trying to move quickly, pull out those acrylics, right? Not a big deal, that'll work well. All right, and just like that, you've got all this character and just a lot of uh, depth there. And uh, that's it, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.